Protest action in Marigat over the impact of seawater on their vehicles. And Housing Minister Reginald Ostry walks away following a traffic accident. And Governor Richard with the Channel 5 News will have details after this. Sorrento. The magic of mobile insurance is at your fingertips. Download the Beacon Buddy app today to renew your insurance and check on your claims from anywhere in the world. Don't worry, get happy. love family traditions, don't you? The fun you have when you're all together preparing a meal that you'll all enjoy. Having the right kitchen appliances help bring it all together. And you can find them at Quartz. Appliances that give you more. Fridges that keep food fresher. Stoves that cook meals better. At Quartz, you get the world's best brand at the best prices. I love that. And you will too. For small and large kitchen appliances, Quartz, bringing value home. Welcome back and first up in the news, people of Marigot blocked the road on Wednesday in protest of sea bass, which is causing damage to their vehicles. This meant that drivers coming from, Pots, from the Portsmouth side to enter Marigot were not able to pass through with their vehicles to get to the airport or the Marigot village. Idona John Baptist was on the scene and has more in this report. I'm standing on the Marigot Highway leading to the Douglas Charles Airport and um, we've been standing here trying to get an understanding of the reason for the people of Marigot protest action. Now, what we've noticed is that because the waves are so high, they co are coming over the sea defense wall and crashing onto the main road. Now, when that happens, of course, passing vehicles that um, seawater comes in contact with them. And that is the issue the people of Marigot, the bus drivers, the motorists are raising here today. Now, the coordinator of that protest is Mr. Edmund Henderson. Mr. Henderson, um, just give us an understanding as to how long you have been advocating about this. Thank you. This is a situation that we've been living with for all those years since the extension of the airport took place. And we, those of us who live on the area, some of us farm on the north side of the airport, we have these children to go to the St. Andrews School on a daily basis. And we have been living with that for all those years, as I said. When it, it came unbearable, we decided to do something about it. And about maybe about two or three years ago, when Mr. Raybon Blackmore was the, the Minister of Communication, we decided to, to make a move to, towards it. And we, we, what we did, we came together, we had a, a little meeting right on the area there. We took some decisions and we formed a committee and we went to him. That committee was headed by Mr. Julian Jeremy of Wesley. And Mr. Blackmore did spoke to us and he gave a commitment that something would be done. The committee, you said that's in place. What are some of the suggestions that they had proposed to government? Okay, one of the suggestions I know was that there's an alternative route on the south side of the airport. That road goes up to, to the um, coffee area. And then there's a bri bridge up above in um, Vauxhall. So what you can do, you can upgrade that area of the road. And then you'll have to upgrade the bridge, after you get over the bridge, you'll be coming down into Kayambuk. Already there's a road that we use, right? All we need is some upgrading of the road. So when we come to pass, if it is good, the weather is good, there's no need to go up there, then we use the, the regular route. But when it is, you know, in a condition like this morning, we use the alternative route. That's all we are saying. The protest started when bus drivers refused to pass along that route to take Northeast Comprehensive School students from Marigat, Carib Territory, and other neighboring communities to Wesley for school. At the scene of the protest, more than a hundred students from the Northeast Comprehensive School converged in the area in solidarity of the cause. We were on our way to school and the bus dropped us here and the bus driver said that they wasn't passing through because of the waves. So they told us we could walk, but we decided not to walk because we would have gotten wet. 
Anyway, yesterday we were on our way to school and the bus driver stopped to dodge a wave. Another wave came and hit the bus. The bus tilted over and fell back on it four tires. And some of the students got wet. So to me, I don't think none of the buses should pass there until the road is being fixed. They need to fix the road. We put the wall high or do something. Do something about it, I don't know, but they need to do something. When I have tests today, I cannot do my tests. I have reports to make, I cannot do them because I am stuck here. I'm Stacey Williams of Marigot, transporting the, the Northeast students from Marigot and Concord to Northeast. And what is the situation that um, you came across today? Well, it's not only today. It's been a situation we've been going through for the longest while, over five, eight years, which is the sea coming over the wall, wetting the students, almost causing accidents too, wetting our vehicle. I'm more than fed up. It's not the first time, it's not the second time, it's not the third time. And I personally have met with ministers talking about that situation, and nothing has been done. It looks like we're falling on deaf ears in that area. Would you like to see your, um, your power rep take this up uh, to parliament? Not power rep alone. The power rep alone cannot do it. We're going to assist the power rep to take it up to, to where you have to take it. I bought a new bus uh, in 2009. And it, if you see it, you'll cry. The other day, I tried to jack up the bus. The jack went in, uh, inside of the bus. It is very terrible. The, just um, Monday, I pass, and the, the swell from the sea right inside the bus. In a situation like this, um, if the, the sea has been causing damage to your vehicle, would an insurance um, take, take that cause? No, they would say that is act of God. So we have to do everything on our own. The protesters say they want a commitment from the authorities that there will be a resolution to the matter or they will continue to block the road. Idona John Baptist. Channel 5 News. In more news, Government Minister Reginald Austria and three other people traveling on board his vehicle narrowly escaped injuries from a traffic accident in Meru. Austria was on his way to town on Wednesday when his Toyota van lost control on the wet road in a sharp corner at Meru. The vehicle rotated and overturned on the other side of the road. As usual, you have an accident, you know, you, you feel a little shaky, um, especially if you had um, persons in the vehicle with you um, I was worried about their own condition but just to say thank God that um, four of us were in the vehicle and everybody's okay uh, we had two um, college students my daughter and a friend on their way to, on their way to school um, they proceeded to go to school and uh, one of my housing officers was with us and he's okay had it not been for a glory cedar tree and a coconut tree the van would have went down about a 10 foot drop Persons have been passing, expressing concerns, and so we appreciate the, the level of concern being shown by the passers-by. But we're okay. I'll proceed to work today, and maybe work half of the day, and go back and cook my blessings. Because right. as you can see, it could have been much worse than that. You know, but um, what works in mysterious ways. You're watching Channel 5 News. The Fire and Ambulance Services Division is reporting an increase in ambulance calls for 2014 over the previous year. Chief Fire Officer Josiah Dupee told a press conference and award ceremony on Wednesday that the department has recorded 8,635 emergency calls for the past year, 1,477 more than the year before. In 2012, we responded to a total of um, 7,078 ambulance calls. And that number moved slightly in 2013 to 7,158. And 2014, that is last year, we saw that number move for the first time into the 8,000 bracket. The CFO attributes the increasing calls to better ambulance coverage, especially in districts where increased calls have been reported. The districts with the most ambulance calls were Roseau, Portsmouth and Grand Bay. Dupi says the total cost of fire damage for 2014 was almost $3.5 million, with a total of 119 fire calls, 118 less than 2013. I speak specifically to bushfires in 2012. We had 194 bushfires. That number went down in 2013 to 130, uh, 146. Sorry. And in 2014, we saw that number going down further to 120. In 2012, the number was 310. In 2013, the number was 317. 
And last year, um, that is 2014, the number went, I think, dramatically downwards to 199 fires in total. Meantime, Donaldson Frederick has been awarded Fire Officer of the Year for 2014. The fire officer who has been with the fire department for nine years, working in several aspects, including responding to fire and ambulance calls. Frederick also conducts training sessions for the fire department in emergency medical response and search and rescue as an emergency medical response instructor. Well, I feel very um, elated. I feel um, honored to receive the award of uh, fire officer of the year. Um, I think it's a great achievement for me. Um, I believe that is something that will motivate me to continue to work harder and to achieve even greater things in the, in the coming future. Ten other officers were also awarded for their achievements throughout the year. They are Michael Warrington, Andrew Francis, Efson Alexander, Alvin Jarvis, Barry Daru, Chris Cadet, Dwayne Winston, Javin Paul, Wayne Later, and Courtney Challenger. In more news, the Dominica Agricultural Producers and Exports Company, DAPEX, has pushed back plans to send home some of its employees as part of restructuring efforts at the company. General Secretary of the Public Service Union, Thomas Later, told Channel 5 News Wednesday he requested the termination of employment notice to be pushed back by one month. Later says this would facilitate information gathering as he does not believe proper procedure was followed in this case. The employees had been given one month's notice and advice to apply for redundancy benefits from Social Security. In other DPSU matters with regard to Public Works employees, Leighton says they are currently owed two fortnights pay. On another matter, he says the DPSU is scheduled to meet with the government side this week with reference to finalizing ongoing salary negotiations for public officers. This is Channel 5 News. Recording artist and director of the local chapter of Crime Stoppers is reassuring the public that it is safe to support the organization's work in fighting criminal activity on the island. Crime Stoppers started in New Mexico in 1976 and is now established in 25 countries with 1,200 programs worldwide. While local law enforcement support the program, concerns linger over callers being identified. We have lines that people are able to call to leave tips on any crime or potential crime that somebody is privy to, you have information on, you can call Crime Stoppers to be able to give information anonymously. And we stress anonymously because we all know in society that people know a lot about crime, but the key factor is the fear of being targeted for giving information about a crime. And so Crime Stoppers has sort of eliminated that fear because to this date nobody who has ever called or given evidence or uh, a tip to crime stoppers has ever their identity has never been compromised the director's reassurances coincide with efforts by crime stoppers to step up its sensitization campaign this is our society and as members of the society we have a responsibility to contribute to the proper functioning of the society and this is why crime stoppers dominica was born so we are on an awareness campaign right now to get people to know what Crime Stoppers is, how it is that you can use Crime, Stop Crime Stoppers, and how beneficial Crime Stoppers can be for a society. Businesswoman Genevieve Astefan introduced the program to Dominica in 2012. If you know of any crime or potential criminal activity, call 1-800-8477. A reward is offered if your tip leads to an arrest. You're watching Channel 5 News coming up, the latest to be shot with the Carnival Queen Show just a few weeks away.
Strong preparation. Strong concentration. Strong teamwork. Strong nerve. Strong performance. Strong oil. Volkswagen recommends Castrol Edge, our strongest oil. Castrol, it's more than just oil, it's liquid engineering. Welcome back on 2015 Carnival Queen contestant Kiana John has been sashed Miss West Coast Cooperative Credit Union. John's sashing on Wednesday as Miss West Coast Limited comes just four weeks away from the pageant. I am very excited. I am elated to be sponsored by a private cooperative finally. So first of all, I'd like to thank the West Coast Cooperative Credit Union Limited for taking this initiative for coming on board to sponsor me. And the sponsorship is a large sum, so I am very thankful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And in sponsoring her, we try to accomplish two things, we think. Firstly, we are investing in youth talent and youth dream. And secondly, we share the responsibility for developing national heritage and culture. And we're hoping, of course, to make the most of it. For us, it is a good investment. Meanwhile, organizers of the Carnival Show are encouraging private companies to sponsor the final contestant. And we still have Patrice Dorset, whom we would like at, at the end of today that a corporate entity comes forward and says, I will take on the final young lady who has not yet been formally sponsored. In more news, work has resumed at the National Cooperative Credit Union after fire officials gave the all clear. Public Relations Officer of the Fire Department, Wayne Litter, says the call, which came in at about 11.36 a.m. on Tuesday morning of a fire at the building, was more smoke than fire. And upon arrival, what we found was that the fire existed in the basement, and that was in the new, con new area being constructed, and it was due to construction work. Actually, what we got was welding activities was being taken place at the moment and from investigation it was suspected that or it was told to us that sparks from the welding it met some combustible material and that started the fire and the, the area was basically smoke log but no no significant fire damage in the area but our officers said they they extinguished that fire very quickly upon arrival and there was minimal damage as i said to to the area Officer Leta says employees were allowed to return to the building after it was properly ventilated. And finally, a blind mother of four received a New Year's gift from Mapping 2K4 on Wednesday. A team of the marketing department traveled to Castle Bruce to present the hamper to Beverly James, a gift which she was happy to receive. I have disability, but in my disability, I still go around. I'm still capable of doing many things that I learned to do and I'm still in favor of doing. I move around my place, I do what I can, help my children, and I try to help them best, the most I can. So what would you like to say to the people who are with that disability that you have? Well, I would like to say to them, hold on strong, because it, it is not an easy um, thing. It is not an easy fast. It, it, it is not a nice thing. It is a troublesome thing, but by the grace of God, I'm still moving on with it. On behalf of the Board of Directors and management and staff of Mapping 2K4, Enjoy your 2015 and we wish many more blessings your way. Thank you very much and I wish you all the same too. As we discovered, Beverly may be blind but she certainly knows her grocery products. That's complex. Wow. <laughs> Number one. Number one station. That's a big beans? <laughs> yes. That's a dish liquid? Yes. And you have... Um, The hamper was made possible by MaxMart and Save a Lot Fine Foods and was part of Mappin's 2K4's Christmas promotion. Coming up in sports, the West Indies they blew a chance to clean sweeps of Africa. This and more in sports next.
Sports has what you need for your digital life. MP3 players, digital cameras, gaming consoles, laptops and desktop computers, LCD TVs and home entertainment systems, all from the world's top brands. For the things you need in your digital life, Quartz, bringing value home. A weekly sports magazine featuring fresh, exciting and stimulating interviews on local and regional sporting events. Gavin Richards keeps his eyes on sports live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Repeat Sundays 12 noon on Marfin's Channel 5. First up, some volleyball. The president of the Dominica Amateur Volleyball Association, Albert Lublak, says he will seek another term at the helm of that association. Elections are set for this weekend as volleyballers from across the island will converge at the Lime Complex for the staging of this year's annual general meeting on Saturday. Lublak says most of the executive will be seeking re-election and highlighted progress in beach volleyball and development of youth volleyball as some of the achievements of the executive. Well, yes, I'm, I'm learning, um, and most of my, the majority of the executives in the kids that they will invest in the election. So, um, we will call me and, and uh, look into the rest of the development. We have a number of um, plans and programs that we have that and we want to continue, and we, want to, we all want to see the world work. So. Um, uh, one of the things that we've done, um, well, we want to focus on our, our youth volleyball, um, the youth volleyball and beach volleyball. Um, we have the six days and we have introduced a major competition on beach, we'll call it a lot of, lot of the time. And then uh, we have our youth team uh, um, already um, um, participating in one competition and we have to be trained also, we have to find a lot of young persons. Because what we want to look at is continuity in this volleyball, and we also um, want to take part in a lot of uh, um, youth competition that go wrong. So um, we are focusing on young persons as well. And on to some football news where it looks like there were more goals than rain on Point Michel on Tuesday. 16 goals were scored in extreme wet conditions as action continued in the Carib Sand and Stones Point Michel Football League. A total of 16 goals were scored in the Carimson and Stone Point Michel Football League last night as defending champions Ian Pinard Boca Juniors were held to a draw at the Spray Plain Field. Under rainy conditions, the reigning champs were held to an 8 all draw by Ian Pinard to press pattern. Jay Marshall and Ian with each red that had three for pattern with Francine Savalier and Daniel for in one each. Boca, for Boca Junior, Sylvester Pelte from part of the net five times with Elmond Derrick and Daniel Dupin is going one each. Boca Junior also benefited from an own goal. Elmond Derrick was guilty of failing to convert from the penalty spot on two occasions, which could have brought victory for his team. The league continues on Friday with Jane Limited for school security ghetto youth, taking on Alan to say Shambhali Bla veteran. While on Sunday, it will be ANP Lot Mom versus Astefan, Belvish Bishop the Young Gunners. Both matches begin at 6 p.m. And in some more football news, Castle Bruce scored a two goal win over the Goodall Secondary as action continued in the Sports Division Organized Secondary Schools 13 and Under Football Championships. The scorers for Castle Bruce were Randell Coppel and Starrell Serafin. Meantime, the semi finals have been set for Thursday. At Portsmouth, the Castlebridge Secondary School will take on the Portsmouth Secondary School and the Dominica Grammar School will play the St. Mary's Academy at Newtown. On to some cricket news, Morne Van Wyk slammed an unbeaten century guiding South Africa to a comfortable five-wicket win over the West Indies in their final T20 match on Wednesday. The West Indies, in search of a clean sweep, made four changes to the side which set a world record on Sunday, resting Chris Gale, Dinesh Ramdin, Sumanan Ben and Jason Holder. They sent South Africa into bat first and the South Africans got a great start scoring 111 runs for the first wicket in 12.4 overs with Van Wyk scoring 114 leading South Africa to a score of 195 for 3 after 20 overs. Hendricks added 42, Karen Pollard took 1 for 13 and Dwayne Bravo 1 for 38. 
The West Indies chasing 196 to win were off to a decent start before the wickets started to tumble. They were 48 without loss before being all out for 126 with an over to spare. Lendal Simmons scored 49, Paul had 20 not out, David Rice took 5 for 23 for South Africa. The West Indies, despite the loss, however, still took the series two games to one. In some more cricket news, the Windward Islands Volcanoes head coach Ian Allen says batting will be the key to the Windward success in the Super 50 Overs tournament. The Windwards, who were crowned champions in 2013, failed to win a single match in 2014. Allen says the bowling department will be able to hold its end but feels the batting needs to step up and support. The Windwards will play Guyana in the opening match of the tournament on Thursday. Yeah, I think, I think more so in, in the batting, so you can, you can give the bowlers something to work with. Um, every player players would have already given their role and and it's all about um, understanding the rule um, and execute it. So I think I think once we we, we put our batting targets on on the board, you know, over the years our bowling unit has has done well for us. So it will give us a give us a chance you know, in terms of winning matches. Yeah, I think last year, um, Chris got his first century at this level. Um, he's one of the players in the um, You know, also looking at Johnson Charles, Andre Fletcher, Devin Smith. Um, you know, to to be you know main performers. You know, um, in the middle you have you know Craig Emanuel, Sunil Ambrose, um, Liam Sebastian. You know, in the lower, the, um, you know, the hitters like Shane Shillis and Marvin Matthew, Dylan Johnson. So. So we're basically looking at, um, you know, at, at our main runs, you know, to centre the wrong of these guys. The Windwards will take on Guyana at 1.30 p.m. and that match can be seen on ESPN. The Windwards team will be picked from Liam Sebastian, the captain, Sunil Ambris, Miles Bascom, Johnson Charles, Tyrick Gabriel, Dylan Johnson, Mervyn Matthew, Shane Schillingford, Devon Smith, Kenroy Peters, Keddy Les Forrest, Craig Emanuel and Alston Bob. And Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board has thrown its support behind the WICB selectors in their decision to omit Trinidadians Dwayne Bravo and Karen Pollard from the West Indies World Cup team. The first vice president, Dr. Alan Sami, says that the board was disappointed with the omission but said that the territorial board had its full confidence in the choices of the WICB selectors. The board released a statement saying that the directors are independent directors and not territorial representatives of the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board on the West Indies Cricket Board. It goes on to say that while the Trinidad Board has full confidence in the ability of Bravo and Pollard to represent the West Indies in the 50-over format of the game, it would be a violation of the practice to question the selectors on the omission of these names for the February March World Cup in New Zealand and Australia. That's all the time for sports. Stay tuned for your weather report. Good evening, viewers, and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I'm your presenter, Marshall Alexander. Again, we begin by taking a look at earlier infrared satellite imagery and what it showed. Some low-level clouds which moved across the region today, resulting in mostly cloudy skies across Dominica. Now, taking a look at radar imagery and what it indicated, some scattered showers which moved across Dominica during today. Tonight's weather is expected to be mostly cloudy and occasionally breezy with some scattered showers. And tomorrow's weather is expected to be mostly cloudy and occasionally breezy also with some scattered showers with a gradual improvement in conditions expected during the late afternoon. Sea conditions are expected to be moderate to rough in open water with swells peaking near 10 feet. A small craft warning remains in effect for above normal sea swells. Therefore, small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to continue to exercise caution. Conditions for the next three days. Generally cloudy skies with scattered showers expected tomorrow. However, as we move into Friday and Saturday, a gradual improvement in conditions can be expected. Conditions for the rest of the Caribbean tomorrow. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies with scattered showers and also breezy conditions can be expected across most of the region tomorrow. Now, international cities forecast. Clear skies can be expected in New York. 
partly cloudy skies in Miami and London, some thunderstorm activity expected in Caracas, and cloudy skies expected in Beijing. Sunrise tomorrow will be at 6.45 a.m. and sunset at 5.55 p.m. For more information, you can call the weather hotline at 447-5555 or visit our website at weather.gov.dm. Join us tomorrow for another weather broadcast. Have a good night. To end the news, the headlines again. Protest action in Marigot over the impact of seawater on the vehicles and Housing Minister Reginald Austri walks away after a traffic accident in Meru. Send your questions and comments to news at mapping2k4.com. Remember, for instant access to the news, you can download the TurnUp 767 app. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Gavin Richards. Thanks for watching.